interesting being a musician, and it's what I always wanted to be. My mother's side of the family is pretty artistic in a lot of different ways, but mostly everybody played some sort of an instrument. So there was always music in the house, and I was really taken by music at, a, at an early age. It made me curious about the aspect of, like, could, could I do that? I went to live with my father, uh, who was stationed in Pennsylvania. You know how kids put your, your Christmas wish list on your door so you can, you know, kind of tell your parents what you want for Christmas. And I, I had only one thing on there. I had a Les Paul on there because I was a big Kiss fan and I, I always loved Ace Fraley. And I think I probably wrote over the top of it, this is all I want. <laughs> and it was, just a, it was just a picture of a Les Paul. days before Christmas, you know, the presents start piling up underneath the tree and I saw something that looked like it could be a guitar case. I'm like, I, I think I got it. I don't know, I was so excited. But come Christmas Day, we start opening up our presents and I opened it up thinking it was a Les Paul and it was just a, it was a little nylon string acoustic guitar. <laughs> I was so fucking bummed out. <laughs> I was so bummed. I kind of looked up at him and I probably said something. He's like, look, you learn how to play that first and then I'll buy you a Les Paul. I'm not buying you a Les Paul until you learn how to play that. And of course, it, I messed around with it for a little bit and it went in the closet. My cousin Kyle went to a swap meet and he bought this it was basically kind of like a Mustang copy. It was called a Victoria, and it was in really bad shape. It had like two tuning pegs left and only two strings, like the A and the E, and the rest of them, you know, there was no no tuning pegs. And the action was like, you know, this far off the neck. But it was cool, it had all these buttons and dials and stuff on it. But uh, with those two strings, I was able to make a bar chord, right? <laughs> so once I got an electric guitar in my hands, I was totally in. I stopped going outside, I stopped playing with my friends. I just spent all my time in my room listening to music and trying to figure out how to play guitar. And I remember my mother, you know, coming into my room one day and she's like, you're not going to stop this, are you? And I'm like, nope. She's like, well, we better get it fixed then so you can learn how to really play it. And we didn't have a lot of money back then, so it was a big deal. She took me down to Alta Vista Music, I think, in Lakewood, Washington. And, you know, they put new tuning pegs on it, new strings, they adjusted the action, and it was actually a pretty cool little guitar. That's also where I used to go get my guitar picks and my strings, and at the first set of strings I ever got, ever got were Ernie Balls as well, so. Also, back then, money was pretty tight, so, you know, you'd play those things until they basically just rotted off your guitar, but the cool thing about the Ernie Balls is they always had the, the bins of, like, uh, individual strings, so, like, whichever one busted, you could go, go, go get a replace, replacement instead of having to buy a whole set, you know, but I, I always remember that. days of listening to other people's music and trying to emulate it, you know, trying to learn it, listening to the radio and making my own little mixtapes of stuff and then trying to learn it, you know, uh, taking a few lessons here and there when I couldn't figure something out, but mostly it was, I was pretty much just kind of ear taught.
very early age, I understood what I wanted to do. I had a dream that I wanted to follow. One of the main things in life for anybody to do, no matter what the goal or the dream uh, or the path that you're trying to forge is, it's just that if it's something that you feel that you're driven to do, you got to take that chance, you know? On the worst end of the scale, if you fail and you don't get there, at least you try it and you know yourself. You know yourself that you gave it your best shot. This is something I always believed I wanted to do. Now, whether I thought I was gonna get there and do it, you know, I can't say that I completely knew that that was gonna happen. It took a lot of factors that were out of my control. Number one, meeting, you know, a band of like-minded individuals and being in one of the coolest bands in rock and roll, in my opinion, which is Alice in Chains and, and my friends for life, you know. Being in the city at the right time while while so many other guys and girls our same age were doing the same thing and uh, to have music completely shift, to be involved in one of those tectonic shifts when things go, one day it's this thing and then it is not that thing. It's a, it's a whole other thing and, and, and you are that thing. <laughs> you are that thing that shifted. I mean, the thing that keeps me playing is uh, I don't know how to do anything else. And <laughs> so that, there's that. And uh, I really couldn't think of anything that I'd rather be doing. I still enjoy the feel of the guitar on my hands. It's really exhilarating to stand on a stage in front of people who give a shit about what you're doing, you know? And to uh, elicit an emotion from them, you know, and to feel that emotion yourself. It's a transfer of energy, and, uh, and that's the, really the whole thing. I think throughout the journey, you get little signs along the road that you're on the right path. All you can really do is listen to that. And then the second half of that is, are you willing to take the risk and do the work? For me, uh, it was pretty clear what I wanted to do from an early age. You know, I had a lot of things line up and I just had a real, real drive and a real belief to give it a shot. And it ended up working out. <laughs>